The only fish I have are fish nets. <laughs> <laughs> the only sharks I eat are lone sharks. The ocean is beautiful. It's mesmerising, it's sexy, it's mysterious, and it makes me feel relaxed and comfortable and fluid. It's ridiculously exciting to have someone like Bimini involved in a project like this, talking about our relationship with the ocean. Not only does Bimini represent a part of society that previously felt that they did not have a voice, but Bimini's managed to bridge a gap to make so many more people engaged with their art. And if we're talking about ocean health today with someone like Bimini, I'm just so excited about where this conversation can go. I'm Joseph Sinclair and I am a celebrity photographer. I love cinematic uh, photography because I'm very influenced by film. So I wanted to create a very cinematic, kind of hyper-realistic, surreal environment. That's why we choose Dungeness because it's a really amazing place, which basically everywhere looks like a film set and you're absolutely spoiled for choice uh, places to shoot. We have got the best weather today and we've got amazing talent and styling and hair and makeup and it's all come together Hopefully it doesn't start raining. We've got the most incredible group of people here today. Nogalivi Rappaport, Dawa Qureshi, and the incredible drag queen extraordinaire, Bimini Bomboulash. My name's Dan O'Neill. I'm a zoologist and wildlife presenter. For me, the ocean is a place that has helped me through some really challenging times. Working as a wildlife presenter, I've actually been told to play down my sexuality, which as an LGBT person brings back a huge amount of shame that I'd built up over my entire life. And I am so frustrated that in the moment when it happened, I didn't stand up for myself and that it took me over two years to realise that I needed to. I can't think of any out proud wildlife presenters and whether that's because people have tried and they've had the door closed in their face, or is it because so many people don't feel like they can follow that path because they can't see anybody out there that does do it? I don't know what the reason is, but I do think it's changing. The ocean is so interconnected with the land. There is no one without the other. I think today we've lost touch with our connection to nature. I just think people see the ocean as this other place, this kind of alien world that is kind of unfeeling. And I think if people changed their perceptions a little bit, and if people realized how affected by our decisions the ocean is, and how it isn't all powerful, it can be hurt and it is hurting. It's more fragile than people realize and its health is right now suffering through our actions. Here on the beach, by part of the world that if we don't do anything about what this shoot is primarily focusing on, it's gonna be underwater in the future. So it really feels like we're part of something important. Just watching Bimini take shots right now, and it's, it's electric. First thing I really wanted to ask you, what is your connection to the ocean? I grew up in Great Yarmouth mm -hmm. and where I live, my hometown, I'm about two minute walk from the beach. So I used to try and do that thing, you know, when you're like going for walks and you do, you get the stones and you like earnestly mm -hmm. look out into the sea and throw stones. I used to try and do that, it was rubbish at it, so I stopped. But then I, I just love the beach, I love that scenery, I love the ocean. And also Bimini, actually, my mum was going to call me Bimini if I was born uh, the different sex. Really? Yeah, she was going to call me Bimini. It's an mm. island. It's also the roof of a boat, but that's less glamorous. It's also an island in the Bahamas, mm. and it's I've been there before, and it's it's just stunning. Mm. Like full of sharks, is, right? Full of sharks. Love them. Yeah. Love, love a shark. But yeah, it was. Um, it's kind of like gorgeous blue waters, white sands. But I just, to me, I'm happiest when I'm on the beach. I feel really like grounded, and and yeah, just 
Feel me. We're wearing all sustainable designers or secondhand clothes today, which I think is amazing. It's becoming cooler. I think yeah. there was a certain image of what it was to be someone that was interested in recycling. You, they'd think we'd be like running around hugging trees and like doing all of that and like, it, and yeah. But now I think it's becoming a lot more cooler. I think younger people are really influencing that. I'm Noga Levy Rapport. My pronouns are they, he and she. I'm 20 years old and I'm a climate activist and student. I've got my big sleeves on, big, everything's big. It's like I'm taking up a lot of space, which is nice. I feel like we never get to do that. We never get to just be big. I've become like the oceans. I've just become this like big mess of like creativity and fashion and like expression, just like miles away from any urban life. And I'm just out here in nature by the ocean. It's really beautiful. I'm really loving it. The ocean to me has always been the number one place where I can spend time with my family and embrace in the love and community and joy that you can find when you're connecting with nature. It's been the place of solace and respite, of feeling peace and just being totally at home with the world around me. It's where I draw the most strength, I can relax the most and I can be myself. On this shoot it was really important to me that all the designers and all the clothes we're wearing are sustainable and all are secondhand and sourced ethically. It's such a big part, I think, for people to see it because actually we can still be a part of that high fashion world. We can still look good. We can still express ourselves creatively. I didn't have the strongest relationship with fashion um, for a really long time. I was very insecure. I was very worried about my appearance. I think a lot of LGBTQ people can really relate to that, particularly in how you want to express your gender and, and how you might feel to, confined to express your gender in certain ways or be too feminine or too masculine. I think the world of fashion is really open for us. We just have to find a way to get it right. I'm terrified about the climate crisis most of the time. I feel a lot of anger and a lot of fear and a lot of sadness. But I also try to gain as much joy as I can. Connecting with that natural world can bring us so much more strength and a reminder of how much our passion is important in that fight against overwhelming fear and paralysis of the kind that I felt for such a long time and it can actually be that moment for us to transform that anger away from apathy and towards action. So many queer people, for young people in particular, we see so many of our friends going to the beach with their family and we know that there are two main issues that they don't have to think about that we have to think about every day which is our relationship with our family members which can be so tough for so many of us and our relationship with our bodies Going to the beach can mean a really, really huge moment of, oh my God, I'm terrified, how do I feel? How do I you know, get to be myself the way everyone else does? And I think drawing attention to that and actually spotlighting how queer people feel about our ocean and about our natural world can be a moment where everyone who's even thinking about just going to the beach can, can have that moment to say, actually, you know what, this can be a space for me. I'll make it a space for me. I deserve to be in this space. I deserve to feel as free and as liberated and as connected to nature as every single one of my peers. We've got amazing people here with us today. I'm so happy to be able to share this space with Darwood and Noga doing amazing environmental work. We thought to what their conversation is about, especially with the advent of massive increases in youth activism. Does this give you hope for the future? Absolutely, they're so inspiring being able to kind of put their energy into doing that. I think the younger generation are really getting involved in that. I think that's important. But I also think what, what stops it, or what stops it being made for everyone is, is a language thing or, or education. And I feel like as long as it, the, the information is accessible for everyone and people don't feel excluded or left out, then we can all come together for it. And I think that's where the future needs to go. Everyone needs to do their bit. I'm Dawood Qureshi. I'm an activist, a writer, a journalist, and a marine biologist. I'm a trans non-binary woman. I am also a person of color and a Muslim. The ocean to me really means flexibility and freedom. And it, it really speaks to me on a very visceral level because it just says to me that there is so much more to the planet that we don't know about and there's so much more to understand. It makes me think of family and I've had experiences where with my friends, with my chosen family, with my family back home, where it's felt comfortable. So it's a comfort. It's all of the things that you think of when you think of a safe, comfortable home. 
I've faced quite a lot of obstacles when I've gone through my journey into wildlife and conservation and it's something that's, uh, that I've been really passionate about and that's been really intrinsic to my journey into kind of understanding myself and my identity. It's interesting that I feel not out of place. Yeah. And yet we're in these nice. kinds of clothes. Yeah. Like you should feel quite out of place yeah. and yet you do feel very much like this is the environment that I now yeah. exist in. I think part of that is that almost everybody here is queer in some form. Absolutely. And that is like and everyone who's not is like an active ally. So you've got this kind of really co collaborative feeling. And yeah. strangely, even though like probably none of us have quite done anything exactly like this before. Not never combined kind of, the love of the ocean with the queerness. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas like that's exactly where it should be. Intersectional environmentalism is the idea that in order to be inclusive to everyone who's um, affected by environmentalism, you have to look at how the issues affect both people and the planet. Because we haven't properly gone into a lot of the other issues that are affecting people in society, like homelessness, like racism, and like a lot of the other issues that are affecting people who often get pushed out of the picture in terms of talking about wildlife and conservation and environmentalism in general. Understanding how all of these different things link will then allow us to understand how we can tackle other issues and also tackle environmentalism. When you talk about minorities and when you talk about you know, the people that we are and where we come from and who we relate to in terms of who's going to look at us and see themselves represented in this shoot, then you really understand that actually that's why it's important because what you're doing is you're representing the people who are actually affected by the crisis we are actually talking about. If we relate the issues with our ocean and our environment back to intersectionality, we can then talk about how our ocean is this real point of connection for a lot of different environments around the planet and a lot of different people. And if you think about the ocean as this vast ecosystem that is very finely balanced, there are small things that can very much tip that balance. And even if you think about the origins of climate change and about why it's happening, that comes right back to how we consume and how we populate the planet and about how we live and how we exist and about where we live. And so these things are really, really directly um, connected. And if they're talked about very differently and only by themselves, we can lose that connection to our ocean. I feel like there's almost no generation that's ever existed on this planet more aware of kind of the imbalance of effects of what we do than the generation coming forward now, the youth generation, the youth activist generation. Does that get you excited about the future? 100%. Greta, because I think it's amazing that they're, that people are so more in tune. They know, they see it, they can in, re learn about it. Social media is a huge a platform for sharing information and uh, you can get access to things so quickly now because of the internet. I remember my mum would always be like, oh, we used to say that like, in the 70s. And I'm like, yeah, but it's happening. Mm. Like, it, is, it doesn't mean it's not a thing. Climate change is is definitely destructive, it's happening, and we do need to, we need to sort it. So, the, yeah, the youth, the younger generation, Whitney, you were right, children are the future. It's the stuff that we do now that are going to create the world of the future, and we're the custodians of the ocean, we're keeping it, but what we do right now isn't just going to affect the animals, the wildlife, but every community, every coastal community, people in the global south, all over the world. What's your kind of hope for the future from projects like this and getting people involved? Well, I hope for change, and I hope we, we can kind of come up with ways, because it's, it's great what we're doing now having these conversations, it's amazing. I feel personally there's only so much the individual can do. The world needs to come together. It, need, it really has to be like a collective effort. So yeah, I just hope we can kind of be smarter. We need to act smarter, act faster, mm. and just get on with it. I think people forget that half of the Earth's oxygen comes from the ocean. Everything we do to the ocean is so connected to ourselves. It's almost like the way that we look at our bodies our organs, our arms, our limbs, everything's connected. And the ocean is just the same with us. You know, every decision we make is going to affect us in the long term. I hope that what people are going to realise, if they know the history of the planet, that we have been here such a small time, all of this nature is going to be here 
way after us. We, if we want to stay here, if we want to look after it, we need to act and keep and get it done. Because everything that we do has a footprint on on this planet, and everything, like we said, everything's connected. And to the ocean, the, the moon, the, the wind, the sea, everything is, is, is. And we, we need to look after that and, and know that if we don't, then we'll be gone and this is going to stay here and be gorgeous without us. Yeah. Save the planet. The number one thing you can do if you want to support the climate justice movement, if you want to get involved in environmentalism, is form those networks, reach out and talk to people, find the community that you feel speaks most to you, find the one aspect of climate justice that you care about the most. Every single person has something they can bring to this movement. That community is waiting for you. It's so much more than just doing individual actions. It's about joining an immense movement that needs every single person. Oftentimes I'll go to speak at different events and I'm the only one there who looks like me. And whilst that's very much an honor to be speaking on these issues, that's not useful. That's not a sustainable form of growth because then I become a tokenistic aspect of this movement and I become an individual speaking from my very own experiences. We need more people. And it doesn't really matter how much or little you know. It's not really about all or nothing. Once you relate to the natural world in any way, then you become a warrior and a protector for the natural world. If I struggle to see a role model when I was a kid, I hope that just by being here and by having so much new representation in this space, we're inspiring a future generation of people who will be more connected to the ocean, to be more inspired to have conversations around ocean health and will feel more empowered to act because the ocean needs our help right now more than it ever has before. Alright babes, I'm Bimini. If you like this video, like and subscribe and don't forget to pick up your copy of Attitude magazine on sale now.